Hey guys, this is Mr. Geist for Algebra 8.1 Review. Remember to show all your work. All right, let's look at number one. Number one says to identify the specified parts of the parabola. So let's take a look. What's the vertex? Okay, remember that the vertex is the middle part of your graph. And in this situation, our vertex is at that point. And that is the point. Now, it's not two. Look at what your, look at the key right there. It kind of tells us. So this vertex is at the point one comma two. Now, the axis of symmetry is the line that cuts your graph in half. And it goes through the vertex. So for this one, it's a equation and x equals one. Like Mr. Grice, how'd you get the one? We steal it from the vertex. Okay, whatever the vertex x value is, that's what the axis of symmetry is. Okay, the y intercept is where it crosses the y axis, and that is a point. Okay, and the point would be zero comma three. And the x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. And does this cross the x-axis at all? No. So for this one, the x-intercept is none. Okay. Now, why don't you guys try to do the same thing with problem number two? Go ahead and pause the video, and good luck. Okay, so there's the first couple answers. Remember, the vertex is the highest point, and that's negative 2, 4. The axis of symmetry is the line, and that's x equals negative 2. Your y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis right there at 0, negative 4. And the only thing I didn't do yet are x-intercepts, because that's where the graph, cro the line crosses the x-intercept, or the x access. Sorry, guys. So those are at those two points, and I don't know exactly what they are, okay? So if we're kind of approximating, that's when we use the squigglies. Now our first one right there, the one all the way on the left, to me it's in between negative 3 and negative 4, so I'm going to say that's negative 3.5 comma 0. And then our next intercept is between 0 and negative 1, so I'm going to say that's negative 0.5 comma 0. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure we know that's 0.5. You can even write 0 0.5. Okay. All right. Next section, it says, is the quadratic equation written in standard or vertex form? Once you decide, find the vertex and y-intercept of each show your work in the first column okay so number three is that standard form or vertex form are there parentheses nope so that means it's in standard form when it's in standard form and we need to find the vertex we need to go on x equals the opposite of b over 2a so that's the first thing we need to do. So x equals, remember this is our a, this is the b, and that's the c. So the opposite of b would be negative 4 times 2 times 1 half. Half of 2 is 1. So that tells me that in the vertex, our point is negative 4. Now, to find the y point of the vertex, we need to plug in negative 4. So y equals 1 half negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 minus 5. When you plug that into your calculator, you need to be very careful with your fraction. Okay, are you putting it in parentheses? If you have an ABC button, use the ABC button. 
All right, when you go through and solve that, you get your vertex point of negative 13. Let me make that look like an, a 3. Okay. And then for the y-intercept, your y-intercept is always 0 for the x. Always, 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 always 0. Okay. So, and to get that, all we have to do is plug in 0. And after you do that, you should get your y-intercept is... Neg zero negative five. All right, number four. Is this in standard or vertex form? Well, does it have parentheses? Yep. So that means it's in vertex form. When we're finding our vertex, we take the opposite of negative three, which is three. And that stays the same, which is awesome. Our vertex is there. It's done for us. So now all we have to do is show the work on how to get the y-intercept. And so we're going to use our plug-in 0. 0 minus 3 squared plus 4. So after you fill that out, you would get your y-intercept. And when you do that, you should get that it is 22. Okay, so I did two examples, three and four, five and six are all on your own. Okay, pause the video and good luck. Okay, and there's all of my work. So number five was vertex form. Our vertex was negative six, negative eight, and our y-intercept was zero, negative 44. And the main, it's, it's in vertex form, guys, because they're parentheses. Now, number six is in standard form. So to find the x, point, we had to do the opposite of b over 2a, and yes, you did get a decimal for that, negative 2.5. After you get negative 2.5, we plug it into our equation, and that's where we get negative 0.75. But Mr. Grimes, there are decimals. Guys, you've got a calculator. Deal with it. Okay. And the last one for the y-intercept, you have to plug in 0 for to find your y-intercept, you're plugging in x for 0. So there's the work, and there's our answer. Okay. All right, let's scroll on down. So this says to graph a parabola with the given characteristics. You get to choose this. One, it has to open up or open down, and it has two x-intercepts. So would this work? No, because does it cross the x-axis? No. You can make it look like that. Well, no, you can't. You can make it look like that. There are your x-intercepts. Okay, if you don't like how that looks, you can make it look like this. As long as it crosses the x-axis twice. All right, number eight opens up and has no x-intercepts. Well, if it has no x-intercepts, it cannot cross this line. And it has to go up. So if you were to draw this, even this doesn't work because you have an x-intercept right there. So however you choose to draw it, it needs to be a Above the x-axis and opens up. All right, number nine says it opens down and has one x-intercept, so it can only touch 
the x-axis once, you pick where, and it opens down. So now I just have to make sure that my graph goes down. Okay? So yours can look different than any of mine. It doesn't matter as long as it follows that criteria. Okay? All right, let's flip it over. I will do an example of one of each of them, and the other two you're going to be on your own. Okay? All right, number 10. Is that in standard form, or is that in vertex form? Well, there are no parentheses, so that means that it is in standard form. So I'm going to write down A, B, and C. The first thing we always have to do in standard form is to find our vertex, and that's x equals the opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4, and then 2 times 1. The bottom turns out to be 2, and then 4 divided by 2 is 2. That's important because that tells us what the vertex is, and the vertex is the middle of our graph. So I know that that is a 2. And now to get the rest of our numbers, we go 2 up and 2 down. So going up, 2 would be 3 and 4, and then 1 and 0. Now, to get the rest of our points, we would plug in y equals 0 squared, or whatever number squared, minus 4 times our variable, minus 4. And you would plug in 0 and figure it out. And you would plug in 1 and figure it out. And you would plug in 2 and figure it out. So that's what you're going to do right now. Go ahead and pause the video, and good luck. Okay, and there you go. You should have gotten negative 4, negative 7, negative 8, negative 7, and then negative 4. And as you can tell, I have already graphed my parabola. And now we have to say, what are the x-intercepts? And remember, the x-intercepts is where it crosses the x-axis. Now, I can tell right away that they're not perfect points, so we're going to have to approximate what they are. So our first one is between 0 and negative 1, so that's going to be negative 0 0.5. And then our other one is between the points, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if it's between 4 and 5, that's about 4.5. And then that's all we had to do. Okay. All right, let's move on to number 11. Is this in standard form or vertex form? Well, this one, oops, sorry guys, it's kind of acting up on me. This is in vertex form because it has the parentheses out there, okay? And if it's in vertex form, that means I know what my vertex is right away because we take the opposite of 4, and then that stays the same. So right away, I know my vertex is negative 4, negative 3. So from there, we can fill out the rest of the graph. We go two numbers higher, so negative 3 and negative 2 and then two numbers lower, negative 5 and negative 6. And to figure out those points, we would plug into y equals 1 half times, or sorry, that's negative 1 half, times your x plus 4 squared minus 3. Okay? So once again, why don't you guys try to plug in all of those points yourself. You will get decimals just for two of them. 
and graph. Okay? Pause the video and good luck. Okay, there you go. Just remember that when you're filling these out, that since the axis of symmetry cuts this graph in half, those points are the same, and then our middle is the uh, vertex. Okay. So, does this graph have any x-intercepts? Yes or no? Well, does it ever cross the x-axis? Nope. So, our answer here is none. All right. Now, 12 and 13, you're on your own. Okay? If you know which one's in vertex and which one's in standard, well, check to see which one has parentheses. Okay? Pause the video. Try both of these on your own. And when you come back, the answers for both will be up. Okay, and there you go. Now, if you have any questions on that or need any extra help, you need to come find Ms. Carranza or myself. Guys, we know that you're learning some hard stuff right now, but if you don't come in for help, we don't know that you're struggling, okay? So that's it for Algebra 8.1 Review. This is Mr. Grice signing off. Thanks for watching.